Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm excited to show you how to combine import data with a live connection against a Power BI dataset. This is actually a follow-up video to a popular video of mine where I discussed how to split a model and a report fairly easily, allowing you to create essentially a golden dataset that can be used against multiple reports. Now, since that video, Power BI has added the ability to create a composite model against live datasets allowing you to create a live model, but also importing additional tables from other sources to service the report requirements, which honestly is one of the best modeling features to come out for Power BI in the last few years. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start with, let's go ahead and navigate up to Get Data and open up Power BI Datasets. And we're now going to select data set from the sales analytics workspace here and select create. And you'll now see the fields list populate over here and a notification at the bottom that says connected live to the Power BI data set in the sales analytics workspace. Now we can also select down here, make changes to this model that will change this to a direct query model. Alternatively, if we come back up to get data again or go over to enter data, if I select this, you'll see a pop-up notification that says to make changes, you need a direct query connection. This PBX has a live connection to a remote model, but to make changes such as renaming, adding data from multiple sources, and more, you will need direct query. And to switch to a direct query connection, add a local model to the PBX, and keep in mind this change is permanent. I do recommend clicking learn more if you're curious about this and to look into further documentation. And I also have a great live stream that I did recently with Jeffrey Wang, who is the godfather of the DAX language and has also helped to helm the project for creating these composite models that dives heavily into a lot of the performance optimizations and many things that go into the back end about handing data back and forth between import and direct query and the ability to have these new composite models. So I highly recommend checking out that video and I will link that down in the description. So we're gonna select add local model and I have some data in my clipboard that I'm going to paste into here, which will be a product table. I'm gonna call this product. Go ahead and click load. And you'll notice here there's a gentle pop-up mentioning that there's a potential security risk when you add a second source since because the way that composite models work, there might be information handed from one data source to the other. So just be aware of that. And again, as always, there is that handy dandy learn more button down here in the lower left if you need more information about this. Click OK. And you notice two things. One, there is now the product table that is in the fields list. And you can actually see if you hover over it, storage mode is import versus the storage mode of these, which is direct query and the storage mode down at the bottom has now been labeled to be mixed. So let's come up and add our relationships by going to the model view over here. Now notice a couple of things. We have a few tables that are in here. There's the calendar table, there's the DAX table as well, and there's that sales fact table that's in here. Now one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click off of all of these. I'm gonna come over to properties and I'm gonna turn on show databases in the header when applicable. Now you'll notice what this does is this puts the link of the actual server, in this case it's in Power BI where this data set is hosted, in the bottom of each of these headers right here for the three that are coming from the Power BI service, where product, which is an import, does not have that. And now I can move that over here. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to the product label in the fact table, connect that to the product at the top. That will open up a create relationship window where I can, over here, make sure that these two have the same type of data in there and IDs. So I'm gonna click okay. Now take a look at this relationship here. Notice, if I move that over, there we go. You'll see that the actual relationship line is a little bit different. You'll notice this symbol down here that has a connection to kind of show between a direct query and imported. So this line for any of those type of hybrid connections in these mixed storage modes will be different from a regular line. Still the same type of relationship of many to one, but otherwise this does change just a little bit. And now if we come back to my report perspective here and go to a new page, I can go to the product table. I can take something such as subcategory into a new visual. Go ahead and just turn that into a bar chart there. And I'm gonna to go to my DAX folder, grab some sales, put that into values. There we go. We can see that we're displaying something by our imported data from the product table itself displaying that sales value that's coming from a direct query connection against that Power BI data set that is hosted online. And the applications of this honestly are very incredible. This essentially accounts for every possible scenario of data combination that you might want. And it doesn't just have to be the enter data that you've seen in this demonstration. That was simply for demonstration purposes, but there are many other data connections that you could have done this against. SQL, Azure, Salesforce, Google Analytics, essentially other data sources that are not just simply 
that direct query connection against a Power BI dataset can now be combined and imported into the model. So if you can import that data from somewhere as a table, then you can now create this mixed storage mode against a Power BI dataset and also technically against Azure Analysis Services. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if you have any comments for a future video, go ahead and add that to the comment section down below. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member.